Hi there, I'm Scott Swinson. Thanks for joining me tonight where we're going to be talking about watercolour paper. We're going to be talking about the different weights that you can get, the different types such as hot pressed and cold pressed. We're going to be looking at the ways that you might buy them such as in pads or blocks or in full sheets. And so by the end you'll have a really good understanding as to what you want to go out and purchase when you're painting in watercolour. And at the end of the video I'm going to let you know how I purchase my watercolour paper to end up getting it at about a third of the price that you might end up paying at your local art store or even online. So stay with me as we go through that. Thanks. So tonight we're talking about watercolour paper and I can say that I generally use really two types of paper. I often use this Archer's uh, cold pressed medium watercolour paper that's 100% acid free cotton paper. Those two things end up meaning that it will stay white for a very long time. If there's ever any uh, acids in the paper or it's not 100% cotton then it's more likely to turn yellow. So if you would like your paintings to last for as long as possible then that's what I would be getting. In terms of the different types of paper you can get uh, hot pressed, uh, cold pressed and rough. Hot pressed is often used for painters that want to do detailed work. That's not me. I paint free landscape style painting so I don't use that type of paper. So that's been pressed between two hot rollers and essentially comes out like you've just ironed the paper. So it just means that it's much smoother. It's smooth like cartridge paper really, like a bit like the paper that you might get out of uh, you know at, at work or somewhere in a you know you know out of a printing you know, for, for a photocopier or something. So it's very uh, shiny and smooth quite often and it just means that the paper sits on top of the paper more and you're obviously going to get less undulation so the pigment is not going to be able to settle into any of those areas so you'll get a much flatter, more uniform look and for some people that's what they're looking for. So if you use some paper like this, so this is Archer's uh, 300 GSM uh, cold pressed medium paper. If you use this then you can see here that there is a, a, a slight texture on this page. So if you've got rough, which I very rarely use, and that's even rougher. Um, but medium is what most people who paint in watercolour use, is medium grain. And actually it's very beautiful and you can still get the pigment to sink into some of those hollows. And of course, if you dry brush over the top, then it'll more likely to hit the peaks rather than hit the troughs. So that, that is a beautiful thing and um, really gives, I think, watercolour some life. So it's, it's a great thing to use, I think. The, the other paper that I use, I just find this here. So this is the other paper that I also use. Um, this is Reeves BFK etching paper and a good test of a piece of paper um, all watercolour papers generally have sizing in them or gelatin and what that really means is that uh, when you put the watercolour onto the page that it won't sink in and it also won't act like blotting paper and just spread out. So you can tell the amount of sizing in a piece of paper by the amount of noise it generally makes when you flop it around and I don't know if you can tell the difference but this Archer's which is from this pad here this is again 300 GSM medium cold pressed watercolour paper that paper has a decent amount of gelatin in there in its si the size it's called sizing and and what that means is that I can be a bit rougher with this paper than with this paper it's less likely to turn into pulp as I work into it with, with watercolour. So it means that I'm more likely to be able to wet it again and again and work it fairly hard and it's less likely to turn into pulp. Um, so I used this a lot when I was learning in watercolour. Um, and But these days I paint 
with this. So this has a lot less sizing in it, which means that I've got to be a bit more gentle when I'm painting, especially if I'm painting multiple layers on this, then I've got to be a bit more gentle with this. Uh, but the beautiful thing is it's it's beautiful and soft, so you, it's, it's not uh, hot pressed, but at the same time you get a beautiful uh, movement of the washes when you paint on that. And you can still lift out lights, it's still got sizing, and it, the paint doesn't just sink in like blotting paper, so you can still lift out lights very easily on this on this paper, which you would know about in, in, fu in future lessons. When you get watercolour paper, uh, you can get it in a block like this. I don't know um, if you can see that, but you can see that it's dark around the edges uh, around here. And that's because it's uh, been glued down on the sides, which is a very handy thing because it means that you don't need to pre-stretch this piece of paper. You can just paint straight onto here and it will not warp or buckle very much at all. So it's a great way of being able to immediately paint. And, and as you can see in this painting here, uh, I still put some tape down. I didn't need to put tape on here, but I put it down so I can keep the, um, the borders of my paintings completely clear. But you don't need to paint, you could paint right to the edges of this. And then if you wanted to get this off the board, you'll see here that there is a, um, there is a gap here where it's not glued down. So all you would do is get a knife and stick it down into there like that. And then you can run that knife around the outside and take that sheet off and then work on the next sheet. So if you want ease of use, not have to stretch your paper or uh, tape it down onto a board, then this is the fastest, easiest way to paint. And also when I worked it out at our local art store the other day, it's about the same price actually as a pad. So you don't always have to end up paying more. Personally though, I, I don't use that very much. I, I mostly buy full sheets of paper because generally it's a much more cost effective way of doing it. And I'll talk about that later. But the other way of doing it is to get a pad. And the pads are just what they say, they're a pad. They come in different sizes. Obviously this is another pad here, much smaller, but again, a, a, a pad of watercolour paper. And they come with different weights. This is 185 GSM. Uh, generally I would try, and this is 300 GSM. And generally I would try and use at least 300 GSM watercolour paper because it's less likely to buckle and warp. They will often say that really you should use even heavier than 300 GSM if you don't want to stretch, pre-stretch it. And I don't generally pre-stretch my work. So, uh, But my findings are that 300 GSM paper uh, is totally fine, not stretched, unless you're really, really soaking it with water. If you wanted to pre-stretch, then you can use this brown paper gum tape uh, and you wet the paper completely and then tape it down with this uh, and then leave it for a day or two and then you can come back and paint. But I like the immediacy of just being able to tape down onto a board. So when I'm taping it down onto a board, I use this 3M uh, tape and I get the piece of paper, put it down onto the board and then tape it down on all four sides. So that's how I end up doing it, and it's much quicker. And the reason why I like doing that is because I really love painting onto a board. Like the, obviously this is a bit big for a watercolor this size, but I love having my work taped down onto a board. And the reason being is that as I'm painting on a board, I'm just much more likely to be able to start and finish a stroke past the paper and work in that full sheet of paper. Obviously this is a bit big, but it's much more likely. Whereas if I worked on a on a gummed pad like this and I put it like this and I just had that on my desk and I was painting, I'm less likely to be able to feel, because if I do that, 
the brush will hit there and then the pigment will go down, the brush will hit the edge. If I'm painting like this, the brush will hit the edge and then the pigment will potentially drop down on the other side. So that's why I generally don't really love um, gummed or blocks of, of watercolour paper. I much prefer the pads and sticking it down onto the boards. But you, you decide to use whatever you would like. The other thing you might want to use is a, a, a travel diary or those sorts of things. They're great when you go obviously off the beaten track uh, and they're a great uh, resource to just record things, notes and little watercolours and things like that. Generally this paper, um, obviously you can have a look, but quite often it's quite smooth or hot pressed, that type of paper, which is okay, you just gotta realize that that's the case. So these are great things for just making small sketches when you're out and about in the mountains uh, and, and doing those types of things, and then they're just a great uh, way to record those, those sorts of travels. So as I said, when it comes to paper, what I generally use is full sheets of paper and I can cut them up into any size so that I can end up creating paintings of any dimensions that I choose because I paint quite often paintings that are non-standard dimensions. So if you have a look at some of these paintings that I've painted in the past, you can see that these are quite often mine are very either long in landscape or long into portrait. Uh, orientation and so I can't get that out of a pad or for just from the shop so buying full sheets enables me to paint in an interesting uh, dimensions which I love. The other thing about full sheets of paper is that they're generally much much cheaper. So this is generally what I buy. This is a full sheet of Reeves BFK etching paper. Uh, it's 56 by uh, 76 centimeters and it's 280 GSM. So uh, to be honest, it would probably be better if I got uh, a higher GSM, but you obviously pay more and more for that. And this is totally fine for what I end up doing. So this is a full sheet and I generally use a metal ruler and a very sharp razor blade to chop this paper up into the sizes that I want. And generally what I'll do is I'll do a whole batch at once. So I'll get, you know, 10 sheets and I'll chop it up into the different, the varying sizes that I use. And often that will be half sheets this way, half sheets lengthways, and then again into quarters in the, in the various aspect ratios. So that's what, that's what I do. And that ends up saving me about 70%. So it costs about a third of the price to buy full sheets from where I source my paper from is Melbourne Etching Supplies. And right now actually they've got a sale which is totally fantastic to the end of this month. And so I can get paper there uh, for a third of the price that I would pay if I just went to my normal art store. Even full full sheets from my local art store, it's a third of the price. So that is incredible. So that's what I will normally do because I'm lucky I've got a set of map drawers. So I order a good amount of paper and then I have it for a long period of time. So that's what I do. Obviously, if you can't store paper, then you're going to have to get pads. And if you don't have a lot of space or boards or those things, then you might want to get the pre-glued blocks and that's a great way to go too. So thanks for joining me tonight and learning about watercolor paper. I hope you've learned what you need to know. If there's anything that I haven't covered, then feel free to leave a question in the comments below. So tonight, actually, we're going to have a giveaway. Uh, this is the painting that I painted in the last video, and we're going to give this away. What I'd like to know is, where does this painting remind you of? And the most interesting response in the comments is the person that I'll end up giving this painting away to. It's an original watercolor by myself. So thanks for joining me and good luck in the competition and I'll see you in my next video. Goodbye.